Many of us know someone who is or has suffered from depression, or perhaps we have our own issues with depression. Among the mental illnesses, depression ranks high up there, with the World Health Organization estimating over 300 million people worldwide deal with it. However, many people fail to get the help they need. Factors such as limited financial resources to pay for treatment, a lack of therapeutic resources such as psychologists or counselors, or stigma. And that is, it's wrong to have a mental illness and others will think bad of you. However, with technology, help can be quickly gained. For example, even with your phone. So, all is great? Problem solved? Keep watching to learn more. Depression is not something to take lightly. It can impact people in many ways. For example, a person with depression may be unable to go to work or be unavailable in their relationships or families. They may spend days in their apartment or house alone with the lights off. Depression has been with us for centuries and despite the advances in learning more about it and treating it, it's not leaving us anytime soon. One new method in dealing with depression is e-mental health or technology and care. Perhaps you heard of apps like Headspace, Talkspace, Calm, and Moodkit. The popularity for apps is connected with the rise in technology in our lives. For example, smartphones are everywhere. Some people even have more than one. It's estimated more than 6 billion people worldwide are using smartphones somehow. With the world's population now at 8 billion, 75% of the global population has access to phones. So e-mental health is something that many can access. Such apps can educate people on their issues, provide health assessments and self-management tools to reduce their depression by managing thoughts and emotions, and learn to set goals to improve their overall mental state. Treatments such as mindfulness, acceptance and commitment therapy, and cognitive behavioral techniques are often integrated into the app. For example, an app can allow you to track your daily activities, moods, and goals you wish to achieve. Doing this will enable you to see your progress towards better mental health and make adjustments where needed. This can help you stay on track. The apps can also reinforce healthy habits and activities with a point scheme. Apps can allow for independence, flexibility, and privacy. Some people like to work at their own speed, so apps allow that. And let us be honest, apps are great for those in areas that do not have professional help, or if there are counselors, their availability might not be suitable for you. Apps allow for privacy in dealing with depression. Having a mental illness in many places in the world can be shameful. In various countries many, many years ago, those with mental disease were viewed as witches and burned. Of course that does not happen these days, but a certain level of shame exists. And that can prevent people from seeking help. Now there are issues also. Independence from apps, yes. But what if the person lacks the self-discipline to complete the required work? What if a problem results? For example, you need help understanding a term or idea. Who is there to assist? Frustration may result and you may quit. More so, who is there to comfort you? Being a counselor for many years now, I know people need comfort and care to help them recover. A human touch, you could say. Research shows app satisfaction is more significant when feedback is connected with a human connection. So having an app that can provide text-based communication with a therapist can be very beneficial. One needs to be also careful around security and privacy protection. What is the app's privacy policy concerning your data? A person reaching out for help through an app who otherwise might not so is a major plus. By doing so, this sets the stage for further help and interventions. People get an introduction to counseling and through this, they may have their minds changed. Perhaps they thought it would be a painful process, but saw it more of a constructive one. Therefore, in such cases, apps are recommended as a first step in care. In helping depression, apps are more suited for patients with mild to moderate depression. With severe cases, best supported by professionals. When it comes to depression, people can be quite lost in their lives. They can need a strong path or guide to lead them to better mental health. This is where face-to-face -face therapy is the best method of care. 
People are social beings and in need of connection. When the whole world is painted dark because of depression, this connection can be a lifesaver. It shows them someone is willing to work with them, to help them, to guide them. Apps can be quite limited on this connection. Interaction with a computer program or artificial intelligence can never take the place of a trained professional. E-mental health can be one way for helping people with depression, especially those with mild to moderate depression. However, serious issues need a mental health professional. Thanks for watching and if you know of someone who's considering using an app for depression or maybe any other kind of mental illness, please share it with them. As always, wishing you the best mental health wherever you are in the world. Until the next video, take care. In today's video, we talked about depression, but depression can also be connected with stress and anxiety. Check out my video on that. Enjoy.